Hello, Gemini, and welcome to Soul Guidance with Adriana. I am so excited that you've joined me today for your intuitive reading for the week. We will look at where your energy starts the week, helpful energy coming in and challenges coming in, as well as any additional information. I'm Adriana, I'm a soul guidance coach, and I help you choose growth and abundance through your own soul-coded truth. So let's get started with your reading. We've got the Hierophant starting your week. There is a sternness. I'm feeling more the authority figure side of this card rather than the spirituality figure of this side of this card. So we're looking at an authority that is telling you there is only one way to go from point A to point B. And there is a tendency to want to believe that authority figure instead of figuring out what really works for you and what your own truth really is. What I love about this card in this deck is that it's got symbols from all different faiths. Hierophant is a fancy name for a priest and it's the typical energy is or the typical um, image is more associated with the church. We have a little bit of that here, but in the book, we have all these different paths to truth, the idea that there's different paths to truth. And authority figures are here to advise, but they are not here to um, designate is not the right word to tell you that this is the only way, this is the right way. They're not here to decide for us. They are just here to inform us based on their perspective and experience. But at the end of the day, the path to truth is always a, an individual path. There might be similar themes, but no two souls are alike. We're all incredibly unique. And there are patterns that we all share, patterns that we can all learn from and benefit, but at the end of the day, this is about honoring your uniqueness. Okay, let's look at beneficial energy for you. Morning, three of swords, letting go, releasing. It's time to really stop looking backwards at what was lost, at why it happened or what it meant. And bringing other people into that story, bringing other people into that narrative, it's kind of like you're trying to spread it around a bit, um, Gemini, instead of allowing everyone to release it. When you speak with it with others or you allow other people to think about it, it actually magnifies the energy of what you're focused on because it's activating their emotions, it's activating your emotions, it's activating through a connection to them. And so it's the opposite of letting go. Now, there's a difference between needing to talk through something to understand it, to release it. That's one thing. But right now what's happening, Gemini, is that you're just trying to pull as many people into this story as possible without the intention to let it go. And having the intention to let it go is going to allow much more expansion and growth for you. Okay, let's look at the challenge for this week, power. Okay. Com being combative or involved in struggle just for the joy of it. So again, these two cards are talking to each other. They're, they're talking to me through, through this. When we think of getting involved in something for the joy of struggle, there's no actual outcome except an inward, and maybe, maybe, there's really no actual outcome here. So what's happening is neither of these cards are seeing any forward movement, any growth. These guys are headed for each other, but they're equally matched in strength. And so they're not going to actually go up. They're just going to cancel each other out. So when you spread your energy around in a way that is may seem cathartic, like you're getting yourself, you're getting the energy out, you're getting it out, you're getting it out. You need to really watch what your intention is before you share. Because again, just going into it for the experience or going into it because you want to, 
Yeah, it's like you want to hold on to the struggle. You want to hold on to that narrative of hardship or that narrative of being blocked. You just want to hold on to that. And while it's a good idea to recognize if and when you are blocked, the point of knowing that is so that you can become unblocked. But the more you talk about being blocked, the more blocked you will be. And the more obstacles will then attract themselves to your situation. So even if this is an energetic or an emotional blockage, you'll start to actually see physical manifestation. I'm feeling that with this card here and the lightning coming down, you're going to start seeing energetic circumstances which reflect this story you keep telling yourself. Another, another thing here, the book, the story. Okay, let's get a little bit more. Two of roots and nine of roots. Okay, what is the message here? These are beautiful cards, aren't they? Okay, the two of, um, two of roots is helping you understand release in a different way. It's right now, it feels like if I release, then I don't have anything. If I release, then I don't have my story. I don't have attention. I don't have my identity. I can't release, therefore. But remember that this is a process. Healing is a process. Release is a process. And everything will come back around. The minute you release the story, then healing is allowed to move forward towards you. And then you start to feel a flow instead of a, a blockage. You start to feel, okay, now it's time to do this. Now I've reached that stage. Now it's time to go here. Okay, now I need to let go of this. There is more of an order and everything stays in balance. And the balance isn't fighting itself. You'll know when to speak and when to listen when to talk about your experience and when not to. Now the nine of roots is coming in to tell you that there is definitely healing at the end of this journey. This journey was not about learning the story of your self-identity. This journey is the story of healed. I went through this and I was able to heal. So there is healing in your future. There is healing in front of you if you choose it. And that's really the thing is that it's laid out for you. It's ready for you. It's waiting for you, but you have to choose it in order for it to come to you. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think if, if I need to give you a metaphor. And my guides are trying to say something right now, so give me a second. They are also saying that this is about embracing being in balance. When we are grieving or broken or trying to get over something, we are so used to being out of balance that we forget what it feels like and the, the, um, the dysfunction actually feels right. So the grief feels right. The heaviness feels right. The blockage feels right. And so this is about being willing to embrace something that feels different and which will not feel right at first, um, but ultimately will lead to healing when you start to see movement and shifting in, in the energy around you and the way you're dealing with the energy. If you find yourself dealing with it the same way, either running at it, running away from it, talking at it, trying to understand it, experiencing it. When it's tunnel vision, when it's only one thing, then you're stuck. Then you're stuck back here, okay? But when you see, okay, well, I experienced it. Now I'm going to think about it. Okay, now I need to experience it a little bit more. Now this is what I need to do to release it. When it's more fluid and changing, then, you, then you're assured that you're on the right track. All right, Gemini, thank you so much for joining me for that reading. Um, please leave me a comment or hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and it resonated with you. I will look forward to seeing you next time. Have a good one.